Guys, I'm Jake Adams with Reef Builders, and we're here at Reef Stock 2019 in Sydney, Australia. And I'm here with the two big gay reefers, and they are unofficially becoming uh, the official video recorders of Reef Stock Australia. How'd you like the show this year? It was fantastic. So it was good. an awesome show. It was just fantastic. Yeah. Oh, let me introduce these guys. We got Darren, Darren, and Gordon. Gordon. Right. These guys. Are you going to get this video out very soon? Gives the All right. <laughs> well, um, they're actually coming to Orlando for Macna, yes. and um, I have tasked them with putting together this little video of. Are we talking about Vincent or Julian? Vincent. I want Vincent's video on my channel. Yes. And Julian's video on your channel. Yes. All right. So whichever opposite video you're watching right now, <laughs> go to the other channel to watch either Vincent or Julian Sprung because they put together some great presentation. But I have to say, I was. I was impressed this, this doesn't do justice to what I feel about the progress and improvement from last year to this year. Yeah. You know, I thought it would take uh, three, four, five years at most to mature reef stock, yep. but there's not much room left for you guys, for the Australians to improve their booths uh, from year to year. This was an amazing show. It was so much time. What was your favorite part? Everything. Well, winning, winning the calcium reactor. Winning a calcium winning reactor. A, winning a calcium reactor. Very good. Can't yeah. be much better than that. Pretty stoked with that. Pretty what, stoked what with you, that. What about you, D-Dog? Anybody call you D-Dog? Well, no, but you can. <laughs> oh, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably I got to film all the corals and like every single coral I saw was top notch. Like you can't get any better than the corals that were here this year. Like seriously. You know, the Australians, not the Americans, they're the ones who say, oh, we're, you know, three to five years behind the West and behind America, but they have caught up so freaking fast. The quality of the corals here at Reef Stock Australia was off the hook. And I got to give it to D-Dog and G-Man because it takes work. It takes a certain amount of work and effort and commitment to sit there and record the videos, edit the videos, record the videos, upload the videos, record the videos, edit the videos, publish the yeah, videos, and then, you know, like a, two and two nights. <laughs> engaging in, you know, your audience and stuff like that. So cheers to you guys cheers. for all your hard work. Cheers. I have no doubt that these guys are gonna crush it in Orlando. Yes. So I know this is the intro, but go ahead and subscribe, smash that notification bell so you never miss a video from these very creative, talented fellows. And uh, we'll see everybody in Orlando. Excellent. All right. Thank you. See you there. And uh, another reason that we're here is because of this guy. Um, it's kind of interesting that since about 99 to 2001, he has been responsible for selecting so many of the crazy, unique coral strains, colors, species, promoting uh, coral farming in Indonesia. And it's a concept that has spread like wildfire through many, many of the islands. And it's, it's safe to say that, you know, the globe over, except for Australia, this guy has had an incredible amount of influence uh, on the corals that we keep in our aquariums. Like, there's no one else like him who has actually discovered the corals, right? If they weren't discovered in the stores, they were found uh, risking your necks on coral reefs. But just as fate would have it, you know, there were some, uh, some challenges in Indonesia and uh, Ultra Corals Australia um, saw some talent that was being underutilized and for about six to nine months, he's been uh, basically working with Ultra Corals Australia to bring a fresh set of eyes to Australian reefs. And so, you know, you guys always say, often say, you guys get all the good stuff in America. And it's just, no, it's just where our eyes are trained to look at corals with kind of a built-in mental filter and some uh, projection abilities of what those corals are gonna do. So, uh, Nick Dos Santos has brought uh, Vincent, uh, has been diving uh, Australia for most of this year, and if you've been reading reef filters, he's been reporting on the, you know, the, the corals straight from the natural reef. And um, I thought it would be really cool, you know, we want to celebrate Australian reefs, we want to celebrate Australian aquariums, and uh, if you dive only Australian reefs, you don't know what's special about them, right? So he's got countless dives across Indonesia and Indian Ocean, and so with his 
experience, he's been spending a lot of time in Australia and really been able to notice what corals and what habitats are unique about Australia. So to cap it off, last week uh, I did my first dive on the Great Barrier Reef and it totally lived up to the expectations that I've had all my life. We captured some amazing footage, photos, observations. This is going to be a talk that uh, thankfully we got uh, the reefers back there recording this talk. This is going to be a talk you're going to want to hear and watch again. So let's hear a big, loud, and proud Australian welcome for Vincent. That. <laughs> uh, well, so if some of you, you know, were here last year, you know, I gave a talk about uh, mostly what I knew, Indonesian corals, and uh, how you could transform reef, co reef corals to aquarium corals. So now I have a little bit more insight into what you guys are used to. So with Nick, we went diving a lot, so I had to experience, you know, the Great Barrier Reef uh, in many different aspects. So, the point of this talk is actually, you know, to make you understand, you know, that most of the coral that I have labeled, you know, they come from many different kind of environments. They don't live in the same place, they don't live in the same kind of environment. So that's, that's one of the points. The other point that I want to make is that, um, so I have a lot of contacts all over the world, you know, a lot in Europe, you know, and they're complaining, you know, right now because they can only get Australian coral, so they say, oh yeah. Australian corals are boring, it's always the same thing, it's called EMEA, like in Australia, it's expensive, etc. Yeah. And, um, and the reason why, you know, Nick brought me here, you know, it's to come over this reef, you know, and we realize that there is a lot more to discover. There is just so many different corals out there. But it's only if you guys request them that you'll get them. So it's coming from you. So the idea, you know, behind all those posts in Reef Builders, and this talk is trying to open the minds of all the beasts and, and get out there and ask them and try other things. You know, okay, we, you all have strawberry shortcake in your tank. I hate strawberry shortcake. <laughs> I hate it. It's so boring. I will explain. There is so many other cars out there, you know, that deserve attention, you know, and deserve to be in your tanks. So that's the idea of the talk. So we're gonna go through some Formalities, you know, it's a big place. It's a really, really big place. 2,300 kilometers long, 100 to 170 kilometers. So getting out there, it's a hard work. This guy is a machine. Nobody can keep up with him. He's working like crazy. It takes, it takes four or five hours to get out there, you know, with a boat going full speed, it's not comfortable right, it's a mission to get those calls. So those people deserve credits. This guy has a lot of passion, he's very passionate about what he's doing, he has a deep knowledge of this area, and he should deserve more credit for it. So please, you know what I mean, give your respect you know, to Nico Sensos, you know, he's one of the few collectors here in Australia you know, that really know what they're doing, and he's doing it with his heart, and you will see the way he's doing it. So, most of the diving, you know, so <laughs> basically on you know, the Great Barrier Reef, you have two areas where they collect a lot of corals, you know, one, three area, you know, Gladstone, this area, you know, where they are campsites, we'll see, then you have Mackay in this area with the Sundays, and then you have Cairns, you know. this is mainly the places, you know. So, you have many different kind of environment, and all, not all the corals are equal on the Great Barrier Reef. So, you have some places, that are close by the shore, they get runoff from from, water, from rivers, so they get turbid water, and you have some places with all those stable like Okoha, which are out there, and live in very clear, very stable, very particular environment. So it's difficult to try to mix them in the same aquarium, you know, even though you can see, you know, here it's Acropora hyacinthus, in a deep, in a turbid environment close to the shore, and here most of the acropora you see is also acropora yacinthus in the very clear water offshore environment. But the result they get, the coloration they get is completely different. So uh, all the reefs close to the shore, they tend to be turbid, they have uh, less water flow, the water is, is, is dirty, the pH is lower, the oxygen content is lower, 
we will see this further. So the first places that is important is all the southern red barrier. This area. This is temperature. What is cold? Ice well is not protected. The swell comes in. Uh, it's it's a particular environment. What what do you find over there? It's where most of the Akans, that's why they call the Akans land, are coming from. It's completely different. It's 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 funny, you know, because those corals they live in shallow water, very energetic water, but actually they adapt to many different kind of aquarium parameters. So like here we have Acropora goka, you know, which is one species of Acropora that lives in. Uh, in temperate water. All those gonium coral with the small polyps are coming from down there. There is very nice hypnophilia, chalices over there. And of course, uh, the micromusa and the uh, scolies are available over there. So this is a special coral habitat. The water is much cooler. During winter, it gets down to 17, 18 Celsius. And uh, the summer, it gets a little bit higher. You know? So it's, it's, it's very atypical. So um, the good thing about those corals is that they actually adapt very well. So even though they live in a place where there is very high flow and quite reasonable amount of light, you know, they adapt very well in aquariums. So they adapt to higher temperature. They adapt to medium light or high light. They are very adaptive. You have to feed them regularly because the habitat is, is, is full of food. The second very important habitat is all the murky coastal reef that you find along the coast, where you have mangroves, where you have mud, it's murky, it's dirty, uh, a lot of fresh water, uh, a lot of flow, because the tides, like around Makai, you can have six, seven meter tide amplitudes, you know? So if you don't go there and need tide, you basically cannot dive those places. So those places is where you're gonna find most of the popular LPS in this OB. The trachees, lasto, a lot of the euphilia and the, and, the, and the cats. That's a classic LPS land. So a lot of collectors, you know, just stick to those area because it's close to shore, it's easy accessible, you just need to go there when the weather is fine, when you have neat tides, and, and, and you'll be fine. Uh, so in the aquarium, same thing, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's they are good aquarium candidates because they can sustain dirty water, I mean, dirty, they can sustain a little bit of nutrients. Uh, they don't need too much flow, they don't need too much light. So they are perfect aquarium candidates. And they are very colorful. Then if we go a little bit further out, you have all those islands offshore, those rocky islands, which reef surrounding them. So they are the water is pretty dirty. Uh, they're still pretty close to the shore, you know, so they have pretty dirty water. During uh, uh, summer, you have sargassum growing and growing all over the coals, and then in winter, the sargassum dies off. It's a very particular environment. You dive there, and you, know, you see the sargassum you know, moving back and forward. You know, it's a little bit, get you seasick, just being in the water. But yeah, it's a very particular environment. What do you find there? You find a lot of coals. Most of the coral that you find in the shops here, you know, are coming, actually coming from this environment. So it's a mix of LPS and SPS. You find some places like Millilands in this area, Cherry Blossom, or Zaria. If you go in the very shallows or above coral heads in the holes, you find the gold torches. This is where they're coming from. Then if you go below the bummies, you will get scolies, you will get boar bainty, but also a lot of SPS and a lot of multi over there. Okay, it's easy to recreate this environment aquarium, you know. This is what most of the people, you know, stick to, you know. So this is still, still easy, you know. They don't need too much light, they don't need too, too much flow. If your water is a little bit dirty, it's not too low in nutrient, you know, it's fine. You survive it. They need also regular feeding. Oh, sorry. Then we go a little bit further. So then that's inside of the Great Barrier Reef. The first reef that you meet when you try to go out. So uh, the water is cleaner over there because it's further offshore. Uh, some of them, especially the one in the south, you know, they get pretty good swells. So there is a lot of water flow over there. And it's medium. That's my personally 
favorite place because it's a mix of everything. You find everything over there. You find good mix of SPS, you find good mix of LPS, a lot of soft calls. So it's like, okay, this is one thing. We find this beautiful yellow catnella on the reef, you know? Why do we never see them in stores? They are beautiful. Some green ones, some yellow ones. It's beautiful. Uh, a lot of acropoas in the shallows, and a lot of LPS, and if you go deeper, you don't find some manchipoa like this beach bum. Uh, for me, that should be you know, the target of any aquarium, you know. Pretty good flow, medium to high glide, nutrients under control, regular feeding, more scores will adapt to it. So that's to give you an idea, you know, of what it is. So you can see, you know, you have the stags, you have the acropoas, SPS, you have some few LPS around there. If you go deeper, you find a little bit more LPS. Then there are lots of falls. So if you are in the shadows, yeah, and it holds too. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of soft calls. So it's, it's, for me, it's not the nicest. There is some place that we will see later that when you get down there, you just, just kind of absorb the information, you know? It's just so beautiful, you know? But this one, I like it because the diversity is very high. And it's very representative you know, of what you should look for and aim to in aquariums. So, just a small video of this guy here, <laughs> collecting one very nice Acropora spatulata mm -hmm. of two different colors, you know, so you can see it's purple and cream at the same time. So, this is Australian coral collection. He called this milking. <laughs> He's happy. He's always happy in the water. <laughs> so, yeah, this is what you have to realize, you know. He's not going to take the whole colony. He's going to take some few bits of it and leave it. And then he can come back three months later and take a little bit more. And then three months later, a little bit more. And like this forever. So this is what wild coral collection must be. Okay, so we are now on the Great Barrier Reef, and then we go a little bit further. And then we get into the lagoons. So the lagoons are very interesting. You know, it's not the greatest dive, but we find a lot of things interesting. The water is not as clear as outside. Uh, sometimes you get a lot of flow, depending on the tides. So the water gets very calm for a few hours, and then they a huge flow, they're very calm, they're huge flow. So it's a, it's a very changing environment. So what do we find there? So this is where a lot of the very nice LPS are coming from. A lot of chalices are coming from. We find a lot of stags, Acropora, Formosa. This is where we find the, the reef Gonopora, the one with the big polyps, long tentacles. Sinaina, and this is where we find the nicest chalices. Uh, and sometimes, okay, this coral, you know, I put it here because until a few months ago, this guy found some in Fiji a few years ago, but the only place where you could get it is from Okinawa in Japan, Pink Neftia. Surviving with light, it has those antella, it's perfectly colorful, you know. I don't understand why we don't see it in the aquarium. It should be any aquarium around the world should have this, this coral. You know, it's a beautiful soft coral, it's easy to keep, it grows fast, it's colorful. It has all the requirements to be a good aquarium coral. Uh, so for me, it's also one of the very easy uh, environment to recreate an aquarium. So, Again, low medium flow, medium high light, medium nutrient, regular feeding. It's an easy place to recreate. Then, to give you an idea, so there I like to collect these pipes. Because you can get, you can select uh, the part that you want. We're looking for branches with a few tips on them, and then just get them one by one. So, yeah, it's quite a lot of on the Great Barrier Reef. Okay, 
Then we go a little bit further again. So, offshore reefs. So, then that's coral haven. You get there, it's SPS land. It's dominated by Propoas, by Posidiopora, Seatopora, very high flow, very clear water. You can see 50 meters, uh, a lot of current. Uh, this is the place where most of uh, the SPS come from. So uh, if you stay in the very shallows, you will find a lot of humidity, Jennifera, then you go a little bit deeper, you will find some Obusa, Sukarnoi, and then you will find Anthocercis, and then Yacinthus, and all those, those species you know that we are very fond of. But it's not finished yet. There is still one place further. So this coral, this habitat is a difficult coral habitat. It's hard to achieve. A lot of people request for those corals. They are very far away. It's very challenging to bring them back. It's very challenging to get there. It's very challenging to come back. But at the same time, I feel uh, hobbyists are like spoiled kids because they want the most difficult to keep corals. There is not many people in the world that can actually keep those corals the way they should be kept. But at the same time, it's what everybody wants. So that's what it looks like. That's a wall effect. So when you get there, and you can see there is a, a one fin coral collector diving in the background. <laughs> so some possible power. So you go in the shallows. Some robusta, abrotanoides, a lot of yacinthus everywhere. So we go there, there is no swell, there is perfect lip tides, we are there at the right time, so we can dive it. If you go there at the wrong time, you cannot even get there. Uh, but just another time, an idea of what coral collection should be, you know? So here you have a very nice coral shopping. So it's no point to try to get the whole colony, you know, to just get the small bits that we regrow easily and won't affect the colony. Pack, pack, and pack, pack, and that's it. That's all you take. You don't need to take more. You go to another colony, you know, and you take a couple of pieces. That's what coral collection should be. Mm -hmm. So this place, we call it the outline. So that's actually the reef which are after the Great Barrier Reef. So you have the offshore reef, the one that you can see from space, and then you have some submerged reef outside the Great Barrier Reef, uh, from a few kilometers to five, ten kilometers after the Great Barrier Reef. So those reefs don't go out of the water. Most of them don't go out of the water at low tide. This is where the water is very, very clear. And there is only a few species that actually dominate those reefs. It's Yacinthus, Clafata, all the table acropoas. So the diversity is actually pretty low, you know? So you dive there, it's impressive. It's really like stepping inside the cathedral. Mm -hmm. You have walls, you can see them from very far away because the water is very clear. But at the same time, the diversity is very low. So it's only a few species of acropora that actually colonize the San Diego. And this is where the coral collector needs to go to only get the strawberry shortcake. That's the only reason why they're going there, is to get strawberry shortcake. All the other copper, they can get them much closer. So, yeah, strawberry shortcake, very nice collection of Yacinthus. Mm -hmm. So if you go on inshore reef, you will find some red ones, but the pink ones, the red ones with green tentacles, you will find them only offshore. A lot of anthocercis, and you can see, it's dominated only by uh, all those people at Popoas. So this is a very challenging habitat. So I'm, I'm still wondering, you know, why everybody wants strawberry shortcake? Well, very few people can actually maintain them the way they should be. You know? So this is what they look like in the, in the ocean. They are growing. I've never seen them as colorful in an aquarium. So those Particular, so this particular piece was like 50 meters, you know, but you are in 60 meters visibility water, you know, so it's like it could be in two meters of water, it would receive almost the same light. 
Uh, so very intense flow, very intense light, very low nutrients. You don't do your maintenance properly, your cage goes down a little bit for a couple of days, you lose color. So it's very, very difficult. You need to be spot on on your maintenance. You need to invest a lot of money in the equipment. And if you have a failure on your equipment, you pay cash directly. I don't understand why people, you know, they make it so hard for themselves to try to keep those pieces. But that's what they want. That's it. If you get it.